In this video, we're going to focus on electromagnetism, specifically electromagnetic induction. Now consider the circuit on the left. We have an inductor attached to an ammeter. An ammeter is a device that measures current. An inductor can be made simply by creating many coils of wire. Now we can induce a current in a circuit by simply moving the magnet into the coil. As we move it into the coil, the needle in the ammeter will deflect in one direction. So because this generates an induced current, there's going to be an induced EMF. Now, if we take the magnet out of the coil, the needle will deflect in the other direction, which means that the current flowing in the circuit has reverse direction. And so that's how we can induce a current in the circuit. That's the basic idea of electromagnetic induction. It's used in magnetism to induce a current in a coil. Now the amount of current that is induced depends on a variety of factors. One is how fast the magnetic flux is changing. The magnetic flux is equal to the strength of the magnetic field times the area. So if you could change the area of the coil, you can also change the flux that is flowing through it. And anytime there's a change in flux, there's going to be a change in current. I mean, there's going to be an induced current in a circuit. So you can increase the induced current by increasing the strength of the magnetic field or by using a stronger magnet, increasing the area of the coil, and also, if you increase the speed at which the magnetic, at which the magnet enters the coil, you can increase the current. Another thing you could do is increase the number of coils of wire. The more turns that you have, the greater the induced current will be. Let's talk about some formulas that describes uh, this process. The induced EMF, which is essentially voltage, it's measured in volts. It's equal to negative times n, which represents the number of turns in the coil, times the rate at which the flux is changing. So thus, the faster that the speed at which you move the magnet into the coil affects the rate at which the flux is changing. So moving it in the coil at a faster rate gives you a greater change in flux in a shorter period of time, so you get a greater induced EMF. And with a greater induced voltage, there's going to be a larger induced current because the current and voltage are directly related. So that's why the speed at which you move the magnet into the coil has a direct impact at the angle of deflection. The second thing is N, the number of turns. As we said before, if you increase the number of turns in this coil, you can increase the induced EMF. And because the flux is dependent on the magnetic field and the area, so I need to write change in BA. If you can use a stronger magnet, you can increase the rate at which the flux changes as you move the magnet in the coil. Or if you change the area of the coil, you can also change the amount of induced EMF in that circuit. So those are the four things that can affect the angle of deflection and the amount of induced current in a circuit. The strength of the magnetic field, the area of the coils, the number of turns in the wire, and the rate at which you move the magnet into the coil. Consider this circuit. On the left we have a 6 volt battery attached to a coil of wire and there's another circuit with a coil of wire and a green LED. Now, once you connect the battery to the circuit on the left, this is what's going to happen. So this is a current time graph. And the current doesn't instantly go from 0 to its maximum value. Let's say this is the maximum value of the current in the circuit. In the presence of an inductor, it increases gradually. In a short time, but nevertheless, it's not an instantaneous increase. So it'll look something like this. Actually, let me draw a better one. Now, 
when the current is increasing in an inductor, the magnetic field is increasing. And whenever you change the magnetic field or the area of the coil, there's going to be a change in flux, which means there's going to be an induced current in the second coil. So while the current is increasing, that is during this portion of the graph, the LED will be on. Now, when the current is relatively constant, the magnetic field is not changing anymore to any appreciable extent, so the LED will be off. So if you keep this battery on, the LED will be off. But when you first connect the battery, you'll see the LED flash for a brief time, and then it will turn off. Now, something interesting can happen. Instead of using a DC circuit, if we put an AC source, because the current is constantly changing, the LED will stay on. Another thing you could do is if you use the 6 volt battery and if you attach it to a motor, connect it to the same coil, the motor will create a voltage variant signal that will ride on the 6 volt voltage of the battery. So without the motor, the voltage of the battery is relatively constant. But with the motor, the voltage in the circuit will fluctuate. This may not be the exact graph, but the idea is that it won't be constant. So as a result, because the voltage and the current in the circuit on the left is changing, the magnetic field is changing. And so you're going to have a change in flux in the second coil, and that's going to create an induced current, which will turn the LED on. And here's a demonstration of this entire circuit in action. So as you can see, energy from the first coil is being transferred to the second coil, turning on the green LED. Now, if you move the second coil too far away from the first coil, it's not going to work very well. They need to be in close proximity. So one thing that you need to understand regarding electromagnetic induction is that if the current in circuit one is constant, there will be no induced current in circuit two. But if the current in circuit one is changing, that is if it's increasing or decreasing, then you're going to get an induced current in circuit two. The motor helps to keep the current changing in circuit one. It prevents the current from being constant and that's why we get an induced current in circuit two. Because if the current was constant, the LED will be off. Now, if we place a piece of copper foil between the first coil and the second coil, we can block the transfer of energy. The magnetic field will be blocked by this uh, piece of foil paper. And let me show you that uh, in a demonstration. So as you could see in that last demonstration, the copper foil was able to block the transfer of energy from circuit one to circuit two. So that's basically it for this video. Hopefully it gave you a decent understanding into the concept of electromagnetic induction. Now for those of you who are taking physics and who need help solving problems, I'm going to post a few links in the description section below that really covers this topic in more detail. Let's say if you want to find the direction of the current or 
the amount of induced EMF flowing or generated in the circuit. In another video, I can show you how to calculate that. Or you can go to my channel and look for my new physics video playlist, and you can find all the physics videos that you need uh, that can help you in a typical physics, high school, or college course. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.